RAID 1, we also have RAID 0 plus 1 and 1 plus 0, also called 10. We have RAID 5 and RAID 6. Each one of these are very important and each one of these provide redundancy for the network in case there is a disaster to a particular hard drive. RAID 0. RAID 0 is striping. This is where information is striped from one hard drive to the next hard drive. If you take a file, say for instance Firefox, if you have two hard drives set up with RAID 0, the program Firefox, half of it might be saved here and the other half will be saved on this side. This allows you for quick access. If you have two hard drives here, you're able to pull the information quickly and you're able to get the information out of it. It'll read a little bit from here and read a little bit from here. Each hard drive will work independently. Also with RAID 0, the storage. If you have a 100 gig hard drive here and a 100 gig hard drive here, you have 200 gigs. But there is no fault tolerance whenever it comes to RAID 0. RAID 0 is primarily for performance only. Next is RAID 1, which is mirror. Mirror is where it's a complete replica of the other hard drive. Say for instance the program Firefox. If you save Firefox here, it will also save it to this side. So whatever is on this hard drive is on what's on this hard drive. With RAID 1, if you have a 100 gig hard drive here and then a 100 gig hard drive here, you only have 100 gigs total. You don't have 200 gigs because the hard drives are mirrored back and forth. One benefit out of RAID 1 is that the computer is able to access information from both hard drives at the same time. So if one hard drive is being used and is, is pulling a different program, say Microsoft Word, one hard drive is pulling Microsoft Word, it will pull from the other hard drive Firefox if needed so that way it's able to, to perform its functions that the user wants. RAID 0 plus 1 is where you have first RAID 0 which is striping and then you have RAID 1 at the higher tier which is mirroring. So you'll have two hard drives striping information and then that ho those two hard drives will be mirrored to the other side. This allows you with a reliability but performance at the same time. If this hard drive fails and is unusable, well you have the second hard drive over here and you're able to use it. You just replace this hard drive and all the information is replicated back and you're able to perform as if nothing happened. RAID 1 plus 0 is the exact opposite of RAID 0 plus 1. It's where you have mirroring first and then those mirrors are striped back and forth. So therefore if this hard drive dies, it's using this hard drive over here. Another thing I'd like to point out is if each one of these hard drives are 100 gigs, you're only actually using 200 gigs. You have 400 gigs worth of hard drives, but you're only actually using 200 gigs because of the mirror. Next is RAID 5, and RAID 5 is probably the most common RAID that most companies use. RAID 5 is striping but with a parity. So what you have here is you have each one of these hard drives split into four sections. If each one of these hard drives is 100 gigs, then because of the parity, you only have 300 gigs available. What you have in RAID 5 is where the hard drive is split into four sections. The hard drive will be split into 25 gig sections. And each section would be used across each hard drive, but then the very last disk would have a parity of these three hard drives consolidated. The next one, which would be the other 25 gigs, instead of it being on the last hard drive, the parity is right here. So this allows you to have a redundancy, but also to have striping. So you have speed with reliability whenever it comes to RAID 5. The good benefit out of this is if any one of these hard drives fell and you need to replace it, you can pull it out, put in the next hard drive, and be able to use it as if nothing ever happened. The parity inside of each one of these drives will replicate to that hard drive so that way you're able to restore your information. Users do not notice this. RAID 6 is the exact same as RAID 5 but it has two parity drives. So you're using two hard drives for your parity. If you notice here, it has the first section here, A1, A2, A3, but then there's also two additional parities on here. Same thing goes for B1, B2, two of parities, and then B3 at the other end. RAID 6 allows you to lose two hard drives and still be able to continue your normal operation. With RAID, if you have two hard drives 
and one hard drive is at 150 gigs and the other hard drive is at 100 gigs, whenever you raid them out, you will have 100 gigs on each hard drive. That extra 50 gigs will just be lost. Whenever it comes to RAID, each hard drive has to be the same. And if you put in a 50 gig hard drive, well, all the others will reduce down to 50 gigs, even if one of them is a 500 gig. So it's very, very important that whenever you're using RAID, to have all your hard drives matched, to use the exact same hard drives, so that way you're able to do the functions that you need to do. File system types, we're going to be talking about the byte sizes. We're also going to be talking about different file systems used with each operating system. Next, I'd like to point out the byte sizes. With byte sizes, you have kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, and yottabytes. Each one of them is a, is a next level of storage. 1,024 kilobytes make one megabyte. However, 1,024 megabytes make one gigabyte. It's, they keep moving up in the same manner. So to be able to get from kilobytes to gigabytes, you would take 1,024 times 1,024, and that's how you'll get one megabyte. Now we're talking about some of these file systems. They exceed to one yottabyte. So I wanted to be able to point out the sizes of them and how each one is the next tier. Currently, most computers have terabytes. However, five years ago, nobody had terabytes and everybody had gigabytes they would use around 100 gigs and then they would fill that up. Now the next level out is one terabyte. One terabyte will run you about $100. However, less than five years ago, 500 gigs would be about $100. As technology increases, the sizes also increase. Unix file system, UFS. This was originally developed in Unix and it's a Unix-based operating system. For you to be able to load a Unix machine, you have to have the Unix file system installed onto it. It uses a hierarchy structure, and it's the top level. The top level is called root, which is also represented by a slash. With Unix file system, the max volume size is one yottabyte. However, the max file size is 32 petabytes. Also with UFS, it doesn't offer any encryption. So if you're using UFS, you're not able to encrypt your hard drive to keep it unseen from other people. Next we have NTFS, New Technology File System. NTFS was developed by Microsoft and it was developed so that way they will be able to provide compression, volume shadow copy, encryption file system, also called EFS, and quota. Quota is also very important whenever it comes to NTFS. NTFS has a max volume size of 256 terabytes. However, the max file size is 16 terabytes. And then it does offer encryption, which is what EFS is. With NTFS, you're able to encrypt your volumes so that way you're able to keep your information secure from other people. FAT stands for File Allocation Table. It is a legacy file system that is used in most thumb drives, anything less than 32 gigs. It is primarily for removable media. FAT does not support features for encryption, for permissions or encryptions. A lot of times companies will not let you have thumb drives inside the building. And the reason they don't let you have thumb drives is because if you take a file from NTFS and you transfer it to a FAT formatted system, like a thumb drive, then it will lose all of its permissions and all of its encryptions. If you take a file and you move it from NTFS to FAT32, you'll be able to access it as if there were no permissions in the first place. FAT has a max volume size of 2 terabytes but it has a file, max file size of 4 gigabytes, but it offers no encryption. VMFS stands for Virtual Machine File System. VMFS is used primarily for virtual machines. vSphere and ESX use VFS, and they store disk images and snapshots of the, in a file. So basically, it thinks that it's an actual hard drive, but it's, in all reality, it's a file. Whenever you use VMs, We'll talk about VMs a lot later on, but whenever we use VMs, you take that file and it uses it as if it's a hard drive. Because it saves it as a file, it allows servers to be able to read and write to it at the exact same time. VFS has a max volume size of 64 terabytes, a max file size of 2 terabytes, and it doesn't offer encryption. ZFS. ZFS was created by Sun Microsystem 
and it's primarily a file system and logical volume manager. It does protect against data corruption. That is the primary means of using ZFS. It's so that way it keeps your files from becoming corrupt. And it supports high storage capacity. Most of the time, ZFS is used in Linux. It's not used in Windows. But ZFS has a max volume size of 16 edabytes, max file size of 16 edabytes, but it does not offer encryption. The next one that we have is EXT. And EXT was primarily created for Linux itself. It doesn't offer encryption, but it was based off the Linux system. EXT is a default file system whenever it comes to Linux. Currently, right now, we're using EXT4. EXT4 offers one yottabyte. It also has a max file size of 32 petabytes, and it offers no encryption. Well, in this lesson, we talked about the storage types and configuration. We talked about tiering. We also talked about RAID and how RAID is implemented inside of a network. And we talked about the different file system types. This is Cyber AIT. My name is Justin Lingham, and I hope you guys learned a lot.